This is Danny McCorders with ArtReach, and we are doing Black Artist Highlights. We have a special guest today, Morris Davis. Can you please introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from, from and what type of art you do. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Morris Davis. I am from uh, Flint, Michigan originally, and have been living in Mount Pleasant um, pretty much since 2005. And I am a hip hop artist. <clears throat> Excuse me, I am a hip hop artist. Nice. So, what type of hip hop do you do, or what type of influences do you draw when you're creating your work? Um, in regards to what kind of hip hop I do, um, I I like to tell people that um, I make life music. So, wherever I am in my life, uh, I'm making music that is, you know, coherent with my perspectives um, at the time and uh, what I'm going through. Um, so, you know, I just remember when I was growing up, um, a lot of, you know, the music that I would listen to at the time would be, uh, you know, gangster rap or kind of what was on the radio, um, R&B and, you know, like hip hop. So I'm listening to that. So at that time, it was just imitation. Like I'm just, you know, making music. I'm just imitating the people that I see on TV. Um, and for, I was in that phase for a long time. So we're talking about from elementary until probably through high school, right before I went to college. Um, but in my life, through high school, I had uh, some things change in my life where I was involved um, in some community um, programming. Um, my mother got me involved uh, with the local NAACP um, and I was a member of Freedom School and I started to learn more about my culture and um, I started to be more conscious uh, about, you know, the things that I listened to. Um, not to say I wasn't listening to, you know, your mainstream, um, music at the time, but uh, I, you know, I, I had a, I had a different perspective, and it was starting to show up in my music, and um, kind of, you know, like what I, what I, what I would speak or what I would create, um, and then I went to college, and that was a time for spiritual uh, journey and um, awakening for me. Um, so a lot of my music during that time was uh, just a lot about, you know, what was on my mind, um, a lot of faith uh, talk and, um, you know, listening to a lot of Christian hip hop at the time. And, you know, that kind of formed, you know, that that was, you know, what I was what I was doing at the time. And then, you know, as I continued to get older um, and matriculate through college, um, I, uh, you know, graduated and be, you know, started to work as a professional. So then more of my music started to be from that lens of, you know, the struggles of being a professional, the struggles of, you know, you have a professional job, but you can't pay all the bills and you have a family and, and those type of things. So um, my music has always uh, grown with me. Um, so as I grow, my music grows and I, I'm talking about, you know, what's on my mind and how I'm making like me. I use music to make sense of, you know, my life and I'm processing it uh, through as I'm processing through things. So um, I think that tell like that speaks to, you know, my style or what kind of hip hop I do. But um, in regards to my influences, you've probably picked up through it. Like I've had I've had several influences, you know, um, whatever was on the radio when I was growing up, um, all of that stuff from hip hop to R&B to pop to punk rock, like all of that stuff has influenced me. Um, but in regards to the hip hop space, I think much of my childhood was shaped by uh, gangster rap. Um, I just remember, uh, I, you know, Tupac being one of my, uh, my favorite artists um, growing up. Um, before that, I mean, I remember, you know, locally hearing Dayton Family. I remember hearing Snoop, 
and uh, Dr. Dre on the chronic, um, all of that stuff, you know, just brings back uh, nostalgic vibes. Um, but remembering that kind of, uh, you know, playing a big role in shaping me at the time. And then also I was growing up in Flint. Um, so all of that stuff was like feeding off each other, the gangster rap um, that was I was listening to. And then also what I was trying to portray as a, a young boy um, growing up in the city and what, you know, what we were trying to get into. Um, and, but, you know, listening to Tupac though, Tupac, um, he had the gangster rap piece, but he also, he had that conscious piece to him. And when we're talking about conscious and hip hop, you know, that was a whole, mm-hmm. a whole little sub genre of hip hop in itself. So we're talking about, uh, um, hip hop artists, rappers who primarily are critiquing society and, um, you know, uplifting of the black community and whatever. So Tupac had those songs. So he would have the I get around or hit him up, but he will also have the Brenda's got a baby and, um, you know, dear mama, um, you know, he changes, uh, keep your head up. So he would have those songs as well. So those, you know, that 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 gutter, like gangster, like piece was shaping me and molding me, but also like that conscious piece was shaping me and molding me. So it was laying the seeds, um, the, the seeds on a foundation, making that foundation fertile for me to be more open to like conscious rap as I got older. Um, and I would think, you know, wiser. So um, as I got older, I still was listening to gangster rap because that was pretty much which was dominating. Like if you were like, it got to a point where I think once gangster rap came in, it was a long time before it was like a superstar rapper who was not a gangster rapper. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause hip hop started off, like it started off with the storytelling and more like party music and all of that stuff. But then it got to a point where um, you know, gangster rap kind of was infused into uh, the mainstream of hip hop. And then I don't think it was until Kanye West bust on the scene where he made it cool for people to not have to be a gangster rapper. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have to be a gangster to be a rapper. Um, and that was liberating for me because um, I feel like that, that piece is inside of me to you know the hood the the you know the growing up in Flint being rough putting on that rough exterior um just as a tool of survival and that mm-hmm. music was like the soundtrack to you know trying to survive in a city but at the same time um that stuff is limiting um and that is not who we are or who we were created to be um, you know, it's just it's just a, a circumstance that we're in. So, you know, as I matured, um, it was at a great time when, you know, Kanye West was beginning to, you know, explode on the scene with college dropout and um, what else? Uh, what, what are some tracks off of that? So that through the wire, when I heard that, I was like, oh, my God, this is nice. And then he had the Jesus Walks um and just that whole first album was a classic. And he like changed the game up and gave people like an alternative to like, you don't have to be like gangster or gang affiliated or all of those things, which, you know, at, b- before that, I felt like that's what it was to be a man or, you know, to be somebody. And, you know, it's not that simple because as I said, I have different influences. Um, and all of these things was converging at the same time. So, you know, I w- went from the gangster rap primarily on Tupac, but anything else kind of, you know, in that area. And, you know, it, it's a lot of other artists I could uh, talk about that were influencing me at that time. Um, Kanye. But before Kanye, there was Eminem. That was a big influence of mine. Um, and he, uh, I think the biggest influence he had on me was... The way he, uh, first of all, his lyricism. So, you know, I uh, I came up in an era where lyricism was big. So, um, like, I'm very, 
I'm very, uh, I hold, like, I'm big on lyrics. Like, I, I love to hear lyrics. And I know we live in an era now where punch lines and lyricism is kind of downplayed and it's more about making a good song and stuff with a good melody. And I appreciate that as well. But I also like, you know, lyrics. I like for people to be saying something. And Eminem, um, he he just amazed me with his, uh, the way he possessed uh, the rhyme, the way he possessed the beat, his uh, vocabulary, um, his technical skills. So I, I try to imitate that and, um, you know, model myself after that, but even more so than the lyricism and the technicality and something that I feel like, you know, great artists have in common, especially like a Pac, a Eminem, it's like they make you feel the lyrics. Right. They make you feel like like you're there. So um, the thing with Eminem was he was very um, transparent and um, his emotions and, um, you know, the not so glorious stuff about his life. And he kind of made that his canvas. And I didn't feel like um, a lot of guys were doing that, uh, you know, kind of highlighting like, hey, man, I'm these this stuff is. This this is what I have in my life. So I kind of adopted that. And um, that's how I get to the point of, you know, talking about what's going on in my life. Like, these are my struggles mm -hmm. from, you know, I feel like that's that's from Eminem for me. So, you know, I would say Pac, Eminem, um, Kanye West. Um, and I mean, it's so it's so many people like Nas, Jay-Z, all of those folks. Um, and I think there, when, when I got into Kanye West, I dove deep into like conscious hip hop. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I would, that was a time when, um, when pirating music came out, <laughs> I don't know if you're like Kazai and Napster and all of that. So I'm like, uh, I'm getting all of this, like all of the music that I like, all the legends and stuff that people tell me to listen to and all of that, I'm downloading all of this stuff. So I'm listening. So I'm, I'm catching up on Nas. I'm catching up on, uh, you know, Biggie and stuff because in Flint, even though we're in the Midwest, a lot of people allied themselves with the West Coast mm -hmm. when the West Coast and the East Coast were beefing. And a lot of us like, um, you know, aligned ourselves with Tupac. And because of that, I never, I, while Biggie was alive, I did not appreciate his music because um, I was riding with Tupac and, you know, my loyalty was with him. So it wasn't until, until he, after he died that I was, you know, kind of delved into that and kind of understood his brilliance. But um, yeah, I so what I say, Tupac, Eminem, um Kanye then it was like you know I, I was I was into most deaf and Talib Kweli a lot um little brother like a whole uh common and all of these cats like you know getting my 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 conscious uh hip-hop on and then Lupe Fiasco came out mm -hmm. and that was like that was I was a freshman or a sophomore in college and man that was a classic his first uh project because it was like I felt like he could relate to me fully because you know you can you can hear within his lyrics like you know like growing up in the hood you know and it being uh, like growing up around gangs and stuff but also him not being that you know being an intelligent brother um, and you know caring about his community and you know wanting to be a voice of positivity and uplifting the community um, and I could definitely relate to that as I was transitioning to, uh, you know, a more mature me, a wiser me. Um, and it was like the soundtrack of my life at that point. Um, what was that called? Uh, Food and Liquor. So it was, it, that's a classic to me. Um, and Lupe Fiasco will always be like one of my favorite artists because of, you know, just being able to relate to him like that. So, um, and the, so once I was in college, I had that I, I was I was a political activist, so that that stuff like that was a soundtrack to my life. And then something interesting happened. I um, became 
I got I got caught up in what I would call a spiritual awakening, you know, um, exploring my faith um, and exploring my Christian faith and, you know, taking that more serious and stuff like that. So um, I basically like everything that I did before that, like the music that I made before that, I, I got rid of it. All of the, the secular music that I was listening to, like I dumped it all. And um, I kind of like isolated myself or took myself out of the secular music kind of realm of, uh, you know, listening to that music and producing that type of music. And I didn't really know what was, you know, this was probably around 2007 or whatever. So this is the same time I think Drake and Kendrick was coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, J. Cole was coming up. So I, I knew them a little bit, but I was missing their whole rise because I had, you know, made this decision to say, like, you know, I'm stepping away from that. And I discovered uh, Christian hip hop. So there's, that's been a lot of influence on me as well. Um, you know, cats like The Truth, um, Ambassador, uh, Lecrae, all the Reach Records, um, Trip Lee, Andy Minio, um, and then some newer cats. And, I mean, ever since then, like, I've, I've kind of gotten back to, like, listening to mainstream hip hop, but I also still uh, listen to uh, Christian hip hop. And most of my content sound, you know, leans more of that because just in regards to where I am in my life right now, that's kind of where, you know, that's where I speak from. But, um, you know, that's kind of like, I, t I know I, this was a long answer to your question, but <laughs> to speak about, you know, my like, what do I rap about? And what have been my influences? Those have been my influences. And I haven't even really, in regards to artists, like there are so many artists that influence me, whether they've been mainstream, uh, local guys, um, uh, artists that go into Central Michigan University, um, you know, some of, even guys that I've mentored. Um, I, I pick up um, influence and, and I'm inspired by uh, so many different uh, people. Um, you know, probably everything that anything that's on the radio, I could probably pick up a little something from it. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the I think that's the answer right there. Yeah. And the world of music is just like so complex and it's so many influences to, you know, to even draw from. Do you remember the first time you ever wrote down any rhymes or anything? Um, I think it was I, it was before I was seven. Um, I remember this because um, it was I was a foster child and it was before I was with my adopted family who um I think I got with them around the time I was seven. So it was before I was seven. It was in a previous foster home. And I was just writing some, some. I don't remember exactly what the lyrics was. I think it was something like, I don't drink, I don't drink, but I will smoke bud or something, something like it was crazy. I was like six years old, <laughs> like they had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah. Um, but that was, you know, kind of what I was listening to, which is crazy because the things that came across my my eyes and my peripheral uh, as a child, I would never let my my children uh, be exposed to. But um, you know, those were different times. But yeah, I, w I had to be about six years old writing my first lyrics. And it's funny. I really appreciate your use of the term. Um, what did you call it? Life music. Yeah, yeah, life music. Like, you know, I'm just making music about my life. What's what's going on right now? And right. you know. Uh, and those uh like that whole the theme of the narrative really uh really shows up. I mean, even from a lot of the influences you, you named, like um Eminem, you know, like mm -hmm. who's rapping about different stuff, of course, Tupac and everything. Um, mm -hmm. how would you say uh or I guess a better a better way to phrase this? is when you are creating this life music and, um, you know, thinking about not so much the lyrical part of the musicality of it or the artwork, but do you ever look at a piece and think like, um, I'm gonna make this art for the sake of it being art? Or do you always have, you know, intent behind that art? 
Um, I know in the art world, it's a big question of what exactly is art, you know? So like, is it ever like a lot? And it sounds like to me, it's a lot of intent behind uh, what you make. How how would you explain your creative process? Okay. So I think that um, for primarily all my life, um, and it, it may have been just because I may have lacked that creativity, honestly, to just, you know, come up with something. So it probably was easier for me to just talk about my life. But I mean, before, though, I, I mean, there was a time probably up until high school, like I mentioned that I would I would fabricate things like I think <laughs> many artists do. But um, I don't think it was until recently, like, honestly, like, um, this past year when I reach had a, a competition, um, which I didn't finish, but I did make some little short songs that I haven't even shared out. I'll probably share them sometime this year. But um, you all had that one word thing where like people could make a, like paint something or draw something. And I said, OK, I'll take the one word and I'll make a little short song for each of them, which obviously that's pretty intensive. Um, and then also I had some other things going on outside of music um, that I kind of had to attend to. So I, uh, I didn't finish that project because I got a little busy and underestimated how long it would take. But um, the point of me bringing that up is because that was probably the first time in my life um, with writing music that I was making art for art's sake. And, even with that, I still had it. You know, I, I feel like I still always have to put a message in there. Right. Because I feel like art is a vehicle for, you know, developing that message. And those prompts were great because um, I feel like uh, in the past, or at least, you know, my the way I felt in the past was that I struggled with like prompts or like, hey, let's write about this topic. This is what the song is going to be about. Um, so I think the quick turnaround and the fact that it was, you know, topics being released every day, I didn't have a lot of time to just like, you know, second guess things or like basically do a paralysis analysis piece in my head. Um, I was able to create some stuff that I, you know, everything wasn't great, but, um, I, I created some things that were pretty good. Um, some things that I could probably put out, um, through that process. So I'm getting more comfortable. That 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 was a good practice in like creating art for art's sake. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to try to um, like put a message in there like here. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the most important pieces, or at least in my opinion, is the message behind a lot of things, even if you have, you know, just a painting or something, you know, mm -hmm. the message behind it is usually what makes it uh, so powerful. Um, so my next question to you is during this whole creative process, is it any part that you just find um, like the most difficult part of the process or just something that's tedious or, you know, something that you can change about the entire process, whether it's the writing, recording, producing, um, any of that? I think the hardest part um, is probably the writing piece. Um, because uh, for several reasons, um, as an artist, um, if like if you're a serious artist or you know you care about the quality of your work, you're gonna probably second guess some things. Um, you probably will write things and erase or scribble out or trash and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. And rewrite. Um, so I think that process, it, it, I'm, well, the starting up process, just get, you know, getting it going um, could be difficult as well. But um, just, you know, creating just from a place of creativity and just like let you know kind of letting that go i think it's very difficult and um again i believe that competition um that prompt that you all did the last october was very helpful with that because it kind of helps artists like you know you got to create this you got to go get get to the next thing 
create this, you got to go get to the next thing. And it kind of reminds me of like prolific artists like a Tupac or like a um, like a Prince or a Michael Jackson, because you hear stories about them like they got like because like Tupac was he was releasing music for him for the longest to the point we were like, is Tupac alive? Right. Because he had so much material that he hadn't released. And, you know, he was constantly in the studio, constantly creating. So, you know, um, that's 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 pretty tough, I believe. Mm-hmm. So what do you like um, best about, you know, your art form or what's the best part about creative? Um, so the best thing I like about my art form hip hop is um, just being able to use lyrics because um, pretty much it's poetry to a beat. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I believe you could probably say more with poetry because it doesn't require you to have a beat, um, so you don't have those confines. But in regards to uh, art forms, like music um, with words, of all the art forms or all the genres, I think hip hop says the most. Um, you have, you can say the most within hip hop. Um, I, I just like, I, I, I like the skill of it. Um, I like what people do lyrically. I like what people do with um, different uh, lyrical devices and, um, you know, the vocabulary, the, the, the trend setting, the, like it's, it's basically you, you, you're, you're building culture through mm-hmm. um, music. Um, I mean, and you can do like you literally like hip hop can be used to teach people, it can be used to make people feel good. It can be used for so many things. It can be used for good. It can be used for bad. Um, and you can just say so much. Um, I've learned like when I uh, had the period of time where I was kind of deep into Christian hip hop, I learned a lot about the Christian faith and theology and all of that through Christian hip hop because you can pack so much in the lyrics. Um, and I like how that's done. I, I don't think that's done in the same way in other genres. I don't think they, they, they are there. Um, when I was, uh, you know, you know, going through a period of uh, consciousness or uh, conscious rap. Uh, I learned a lot about Black history and um, civil rights figures and different laws and stuff that I didn't know about um, just by listening. Um, so it, it you can learn a lot. You can be taught a lot. Um, you can learn about the culture. Now, I mean, a lot, a lot of those things, it's, 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 you got to be careful and take stuff with a grain of salt because it's through the lens of the, you know, the speaker or whatever, and everybody's being impacted by uh, kind of the society that we live in, which is not a perfect society, which is, um, you know, in the context of America has, uh, you know, dealt, dealt with, is dealing with, um, you know, a lot of like different injustices and oppression and stuff. And, you know, people are creating art through this lens and living life through that lens. And that's not always the healthiest lens to uh, be looking through. But it's important to because uh, I think hip hop gives voice to the voiceless and the marginalized, um, unlike many other uh, genres. I mean, in some ways, like other genres, but uh, I think hip hop sets itself apart mm-hmm. uh, just with the with artists ability to do do that. Um, so I think I answered the question about what I like about the genre. Oh, yeah. Um, I think you asked also, what did I like about the creative process? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what do I like about the creative process? Uh, I, I like when I've got something. It's not quite finished, um, but I can see like it's going somewhere. Um, I can see like I got this great idea and it's coming out like I want it to come out. Um, and, you know, it's coming together like I want it to come together. I like that. And then I also like um, 
when it's finished, honestly, um, when it's finished and people are consuming it and they're, you know, they are interacting with it and it's touched them in this way and, you know, they're continuing to listen to it and learn things from it, learning about me and learning about different things um, in this world and learning about life from my perspective. Um, that's really powerful. Um, so I really, I really like that part of the process. So like, you know, seeing something coming to fruition mm -hmm. uh, and like after that thing comes to fruition, seeing other people enjoy it and it have an impact on their lives. Right. So what would you say um, after, you know, you've been doing this for a while. I mean, you said since you were younger than seven years old <laughs> uh, doing this for a while. What is right. either the best piece of advice that you've heard about this craft or art or the best piece of advice that you would like to give uh, to other people out there uh, partaking in this art form? Yeah, so um, I think, I'll leave, you know, a few things. I'll say a few things. So um, from somebody more, more recent, like so Nipsey Hussle um it's you know it's a marathon um he said one of the things he said is the reason why they made it was that they never stopped they never quit um and you know they kept going uh, unfortunately he passed but i think a lot of people saw that grind and that hustle and um were like yeah we're gonna keep moving i mean i saw that and that kind of inspired me to keep like going and and keep pushing um i think one of the things i mean it's not an original thought but it's like one of those things once you hear it it's like um it's intuitive like uh it's you know if you don't take yourself seriously other people won't take you seriously like um you can't expect like especially from a hip-hop standpoint um or anything really, like any business, anything you're doing, you can't automatically expect that your friends and your family are gonna support you. Um, although I do have uh, the support of, you know, friends and family, um, you can't expect them to be like your clientele or your customer base. It's not a good business plan. Like if you're trying to, uh, you know, do the business of this thing like you really have to have try to have a business mind and be entrepreneurial mindset have an entrepreneurial mindset and really try to figure out the business of this thing and um because there's a lot of talented people and i you know growing up i was like man how is this dude doing or how is this dude have a deal or how is this person um because i'm, I'm like i'm better than that person or i'm better than this person talent wise and really you know it's, it's um a lot of times what we don't see is that these people are very hard you know they're extreme hard workers um it's tip usually there's no no such thing as somebody just like uh making it overnight they've been working for years or whatever and it might seem like they made it overnight but they've been doing this for years um so it's like you you really have to kind of be on your grind and have tunnel vision and you know really get acquainted with the business side of things and really uh be about that business and then be about your business and as you're you know as you're making moves and as you you produce you're putting art out you're taking yourself serious other people will take you serious your friends and family who didn't really want to listen to you they might start wanting to listen to you but even if they don't that's okay because the business plan isn't really it's not to reach them you're trying to reach the people who need to hear the stuff that you have so um i think that's really important mm -hmm. All right. So what have you um, either been or tell us about your the last project that you worked on, uh, basically what it was, what it was about, how it came to be and uh, where people can find it at. Mm -hmm. So um, the, my last project came out of that same spirit of, you know, not quitting and keep going um, and taking myself serious. Um, it, the project was the Prey EP. And I put it out in 2019. So that was like my first serious project. 
um, that I put out in all of the digital digital stores and stuff. And um, it was it's called Pray. Um, it's about a lot. Uh, so it, it, it there's pieces on there that talks about kind of my background, kind of some of the stuff that we cover here. It's called uh, the first track on there is called West Genesee. And it takes you um, to, so basically West Genesee is a street that I grew up in on Flint in Flint and kind of takes you through my mindset at that time. Um, and kind of how the trajectory of my life was basically, um, I was gonna end up in jail or dead, basically the trajectory of my life, but it changed. Um, and I was kind of spared and, you know, I have one of my good friends from college, um, Jarrell Irves, I had him on the interludes or actually at the, at the end of the songs, like saying a prayer that related to that song. Um, so West Genesee tells like my backstory. Um, I had a song on there called Rondo, which is more so like, it, it's, it's, I think it t gives you a little inside look at me, but it's more like showing off my lyrical ability and also my, um, affinity for, uh, the faith. Um, and then there's a track on there called Me at the Zoo. Um, it's about ba basically, so the idea for me at the zoo actually came from, um, I, I don't, I was looking at the first YouTube video, which were by, was by the creators of YouTube and it was called me at the zoo. And on this original track, I had a clip of that, the sound from that video playing and I put it on that, I put it on the track, um, on that original track. It didn't make the album like that, but, um, basically I took that concept and talked about the, uh, relationship between black people in the United States, um, in the government and just like kind of historical uh, context. And then also I was talking about the Flint water crisis because it's my hometown. And I kind of tell a story about when I was um, back in 2010, uh, one of my, you know, a couple of my friends, well, actually, I think there was five or six of us. We were going from, we went from, so I went from Michigan, um, we pick up some people in Ohio, and then we went, we were going down to Florida to a Christian hip hop conference. And while we were in Georgia, I was asleep. And then um, my friend was driving a van and it was swerving a little bit. So he drew the attention of the state police and we got pulled over. So he woke me, uh, my friend who was driving, woke me up about, out of my sleep and said to get his wallet from the back. So I'm not thinking anything of it. Yeah. I go back there, go get this wallet. And the police, you know, pulled his gun out on me and all of that and told me to get out the uh, the van. And, you know, I'm out of it. I just woke up. So, I mean, I reflect on that. Like, man, I could have died. <laughs> like, I mean, he that woke me up really quick, too. So. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that, that's the story kind of talking about those things. And um, just, a, just a few other tracks on there. Just talk, like giving a little insights into my life and um kind of showcasing my lyrical ability and kind of some of the things that i that i have on my mind so it's a good piece um i think it was a good debut piece i really like i put it out and you know people uh people liked it um still people listen to it and are asking like when is the next thing coming out <laughs> when are you gonna like they're waiting for stuff so um i am working on something new and I need to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, where can people find you at? Do you have any social media they can find you at? Any handles that they should know about? Yeah, so they can find me. I'm uh, Mars Davis. Um, I am Mars Davis on uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, um, Facebook, just go look for Myers Davis, YouTube, Myers Davis, like all just Myers Davis. So if you do like flowpage.com slash I am Myers Davis, you can see all of my the links to me and how to get 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 to me, get in contact with me or uh, listen to music. Um, 
this year I'm, you know, I got to, I'm planning, I'm planning, I'm, I will be executing and simultaneously planning on rolling up out stuff and, you know, uh, doing different things on uh, social media and trying to engage uh, people who uh, follow me now and uh, kind of are fans now and also people who may not be. So definitely look out for that stuff. Um, I'll be doing some things. Nice. All right. Is there anything else you would like to tell uh, the listeners today? Anything about you, your music, anything you think they should know? Um, um, I'm, I am Mars Davis. Um, I am the director of the Refuge Creative Collective, LLC. So we're a label organization type, type deal. Um, we, uh, you know, I have some, you know, I have some stuff coming out. Like, uh, we have, I have the Love Project coming up um later later this year or early next year um i have some you know up until then you know you can go listen to a uh, love for you that's going to be on an upcoming project um go listen to the music go follow on social media i follow back um as long as you're not a bot or <laughs> as long as you're not like the uh, bitcoin um all of those people, like I always get those people following me. I'm like, is this a real person? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, um, just, you know, come, support, listen and see if you like it. If you do, you know, support, follow, um, share with other people. And yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, having this conversation today. Hopefully people out there learned a lot about hip hop, learned a lot about you as an artist and the art form. So uh, thank you so much and have a great day. All right. Thank you.